Ladies and gentlemen, the title of this program admits a contest. As India completed 50 years of independence, Sunil Khilnani argued that democracy, pluralism, and development were the foundations of the Indian state. Professor Kilnani was not wrong, but Nehru's idea of India has been shaken by another. As the Ram Mandir rises in Ayodhya, the idea that India must be a Hindu nation is in the ascendant. In 2018, Mohan Bhagwat said, we want a nation that is highly competent. However, the competence will not be used to suppress others. And the factor uniting us here is what is called Hindutva. The RSS chief defined Hindutva as the name of the value system comprising unity in diversity, harmony, sacrifice, temperance, and gratefulness, of which truth is the foundation. In the Bharatiya system, along with conducting scientific experiments to study the transient material world, we have also made studies about the eternal spiritual world. We are never satisfied by holding discussions on logic and philosophy merely at the intellectual level. The fusion of the spiritual and the material, of religion and government, reached its climax during the inauguration of the Ram Mandir in January. The Prime Minister said, Ram is the faith of Bharat. Ram is the foundation of Bharat. Ram is the thought of Bharat. Ram is the constitution of Bharat. Today, this represents the main current in Indian politics. Many millennials sympathize. Vivan Marwa writes that this generation born between 1981 and 1996, had a big, almost pivotal role in Narendra Modi's landslide re-election in 2019 and the BJP's seemingly unbreakable hold over the country's politics. Most lack economic security because of inadequate job creation. But they are tired of the old elites in Latyan's Delhi and vote for people who speak look and pray like them. They demand bold, decisive leadership. The generation born between 1997 and 2010 thinks a little differently, write researchers Feril Badiani and Harish Krishna. Growing up amid social media, Gen Z are more likely to defy their parents and listen to their friends. Wokeness has become their social currency. Away from the largest cities, they still play safe in their careers and family lives, but they express themselves more freely through their hobbies and, like millennials, have a need for belonging. Ethics have a greater influence on what they buy. Progressives might find an opportunity here. Another idea of India could combine economic and social progress, care for the environment, pluralism, and national security. It could restore the constitutional balance between national unity and the dignity of the individual. It would have to show how more jobs could be created more humanely. And it would need to be articulated by a leader who embodies these values and with whom young voters identify. I come from two Indias, the comedian Veer Das said in 2021, where the AQI is 9,000, but we still sleep on the roof and look up at the stars, where we claim to be divided by Bollywood on Twitter, but are united by Bollywood in the darkness of a theater where we laugh so loudly in the comfort of our homes that you can hear us through the walls, and yet we break down the walls of a comedy club because you can hear laughter inside. The other India must find its voice. 
To do so, it must answer two questions. If not Ram Rajya, then what? And if not Modi, then who? Only then will we have a real contest. Thank you.